Uh, namaste and a very, very good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are You're listening to us and you are with us. Uh, this is me, Sandesh Das Fresta, uh, the moderator of the session, Overcoming Challenges to Advance Economic Freedom. Uh, we are at the Atlas Networks 2021 Asia Liberty Forum, which is co-hosted by Bikalpa and Alternative. Today is the 24th of June, 2021. And we all geared up for the session. Hopefully the session earlier to this, that was the effects of COVID-19 on personal liberty was an insightful one. And we hope to make this session also impactful with your insights too. Uh, today, uh, in this world of pandemic, in this world of uh, too many issues that have been uh, coming up, uh, the unprecedented global economic recession has made uh, economic freedom absolutely necessary. Uh, for an economic rebound. So this economic rebound can only happen when there's economic freedom that can be uh, guaranteed, validated uh, at all level. Global challenges are there. Uh, regional challenges are there. Country specific challenges are there and local challenges are there. The world is one cosmos. So in that context, if we go from the top up approach or the bottom down approach, whatever it is, we got to look into the fact that economic freedom in times of these challenging uh, period is a necessity. So there are many countries where it is difficult to promote the values of personal liberty and economic freedom. How can freedom be ensured in an environment where the notion of liberty is difficult to preach? That's the pertinent question that has gone through many activists, think tanks, mind free. So today here we are with three panelists. Uh, the panelists who are going to deliberate on the issues at a general level and also at a country specific level. So we have three panelists, uh, Mohammed Khalid Ramizi from Afghanistan, Sarva Garaj Pande from Nepal, and Mr. Din Thua Min from Vietnam. Uh, I'd like to welcome the panelists and alphabetically, uh, according to country's name, alphabetically, I'm going to introduce a panelist. So I would like to introduce uh, Mohammed Khalid Ramizi from the Afghanistan Economic and Legal Studies Organization. Mohammed Ramizi is a rising young leader and human rights activist in Afghanistan. He is currently working as Chief Executive Officer, CEO of Afghanistan Economic and Legal Studies Organization, an Afghanistan-led libertarian uh, think tank, a partner of Atlas Network, as well as he is the founder and director of Silk Road Online Radio and TV, Afghanistan's first online scientific radio TV and uh, radio and TV station. This station was established by the support of Network for a Free Society of UK and the Atlas Network of the USA. Mohammad Khalid Ramizi is committed and determined to promote the ideas of liberty, free market, human rights, rule of law, limited government, and bring peace and prosperity, the culture of coexistence and tolerance in Afghanistan. He is also one of the founder and board member of the White Assembly and leads over 10,000s of youths across Afghanistan to educate them to the ideas and philosophy of liberty. Mr. Khalid Ramizi is a mind-provoking writer, human rights activist, lawyer, and poetic commentator, and currently he is studying for a master's degree in the field of education management at Kabul University. He values life and its liberty, and Khalid writes, uh, wishes to bring peace, love, prosperity, and liberty in Afghanistan. I'd like to introduce my second panelist. He is from Nepal, representing uh, Bikalpa and Alternative, Sarvagaraj Pandey. Mr. Sarvage has five years of experience in research, advocacy, and filmmaking. He specializes in public policy research at the local level and creating advocacy campaigns with a focus on small businesses, trade, governance, and urban transportation. He has also headed the research wing of the post-disaster management team of Biratner Municipality in 2017, managing the data collection team and providing the assessment report to the Metropolitan Office. More recently, he worked as a research and survey consultant for Digo Bikas Institute on the e rickshaw solar stand project with a focus on introducing solar charging stations for e-vehicles across the city. He has also worked with Makalu Television as a production staff in the past. Besides, he has been 
a part of various youth movements and campaigns. He is currently associated with Bikalpa and of Alternative as a researcher and with Swiss Contact Nepal as a consultant. Mr. Pandey completed his Bachelor's of Engineering in Biotechnology from Visavarava Technological University in Karnataka, India, and is a Master's of Arts in Sociology degree holder from Trivon University, Nepal. Welcome, Mr. Sarvagiraj Pandey. And my third panelist today is from Vietnam, Mr. Din Min from the Market Solutions Research Center for Social and Economic Issues, Maasai, Vietnam. Mr. Din Thuan Min is currently the research director of the Center for Research and Market Solutions for Socioeconomic Issues, MASSCI. Mr. Min is known in Vietnam as one of the fervent advocates for the development of a free market economy in Vietnam. He is the author and editor of many valuable academic books. Min is also a translator for some valuable works of thinkers such as F.A. Hayek, Ludwig von Mises, Milton Friedman, etc. into Vietnamese. He's also, he also regularly writes analytical articles, comments, or gives interviews on socioeconomic issues of Vietnam. Mr. Dun, Din Tuan Min graduated with a master's degree from the Asian Institute of Technology, AIT Bangkok, Thailand, and joined the PhD program in the economics of technical changes at Maastricht University, the Netherlands. I'd like to welcome Mr. Min to our panel. And myself, I'm Sandes Das Schrester. I'm an advisor to Bikalpa and Alternative, that is the co-host of this event. Uh, I am a PhD holder in marketing strategies, and also uh, work uh, in the socioeconomic field. I, I run a radio station uh, at my hometown called Biratnagar, which is in the eastern part of Nepal. So a nam big namaste to all of you. And now uh, we would like to straight away dive into our issues. So I'd like to start, as I said, we started alphabetically. There are some uh, common questions for all of our three panelists, as well as we have uh, some country specific uh, issues that could be raised during this session. If anyone wishes to uh, write down uh, any comments that you would want to uh, ver verify or elaborate from the part of the panelists, you can do so on the chat box, but it will be on the sole discretion of the organizers whether we take in your uh, queries or not. But we'll try to as much as we can uh, to incorporate all your viewpoints. So I start off with Mohamed uh, Khalid Ramizi. Hello. You're with us, right? Uh, uh, hello, Hall. Hello, Dr. Sandish. Yes, uh, it's good to hear you. Uh, Ramisi, what are the challenges that you're seeing in advancing uh, economic freedom in your country? Uh, this is a question that I'll be asking all the other two panelists also. So what are the challenges that you see in advancing economic freedom in your country, Afghanistan? Uh, thank you, Dr. Sandish. Hello, Hall. Uh, at first, I would like to say a big thanks to Atlas Network and also to Bicolpo for organizing of this great, uh, for giving of this uh, great opportunity uh, and organizing of the Asia Liberty Forum 2021 online uh, in this difficult time of COVID-19. Uh, in a country such as Afghanistan, uh, which passed more than three decades war, and it's still there are many ongoing conflicts, uh, the challenges for advancing of all kinds of freedom, and even talking about these ideas are very difficult. Uh, to work for freedom in Afghanistan is a kind of dealing with your life, because most of the people are thinking that you are going to change their beliefs and ideas toward the Western uh, ideologies. The challenges which we are facing in advancing uh, of economic uh, and individual freedom uh, are a lot. But uh, considering the time, I would like to mention a few of its challenges uh, for you and for the great audience. Uh, Afghanistan's economic freedom score is 53.0, and our economy is uh, 146 freest uh, according to the 2021 Economic Freedom Index report. Unfortunately, the overall score of Afghanistan in economic freedom report uh, shows that decreased 1.7 points because of the problems related to the rule of law in Afghanistan. 
Afghanistan is ranked 33rd among 40 countries in Asia Pacific region, and its overall score is below the regional and world average. I would like to mention briefly a few of the uh, important or the, or the biggest challenges that we are facing in advancing of economic freedom in Afghanistan. And also I would like to mention that I'm so sorry that I can't turn on my video because of the uh, uh, low speed of internet. Uh, so the first issue that I would like to mention spe specifically about the Afghanistan is war. Unfortunately, war and insecurity is one of the biggest challenges in Afghanistan for advancing of economic freedom. The second challenges or the other challenges is existing of communism ideologies. As you all know that Afghanistan was occupied for a long time by the Soviet Union, by the former Soviet Union, and they were in Afghanistan for a long time, and they invested a lot in different uh, issues of the country, and it's still the communism ideology are somehow alive in the country. And there is a strong need to we should work and to we should fight against the ideology of communism in the country. The other point is negative mindset of society toward all kinds of freedom, freedom of expression, freedom of religion, freedom of economics, individual freedom, and all kinds of freedom. But in here, we, we, we especially also, we are working in different things with, uh, with different issues, uh, with, uh, with, with different measurements to we should uh, work and to we should promote the ideas of a free society. The other issue is the existing of laws which adopted during the communist regime and other governments, uh, which they were against the ideas of uh, free society. For example, most of the Afghanistan national laws uh, adopted during the communist regime and also during the uh, Taliban uh, or during the Mujahideen regime or government, that they don't believe about these ideas and, uh, uh, and, and, and there is no uh, uh, issues and they didn't consider the international laws, the li liberal ideas uh, uh, in the laws. Uh, the other issue says existing of market manipulators. Those who are destroying the market and they don't want a sustainable market in the country. Other issue is lack of experts in the field of market economy, unfortunately. And uh, in this case, uh, also as a think tank, we are always trying to uh, uh, create uh, uh, new leaders in the freedom movement of the country so they should know exactly what economic freedom or what the issues of, or, or what the values of a free society are and how they can promote these ideas in the country. Okay. Just two or three other points that I would like to mention very briefly. Yes, yes, yes as, please. Yeah, just the, the wrong policies of the government and also corruption are also uh, some other important points uh, uh, to we should consider as challenges for, for the promotion of economic freedom and also lack of guarantee in investments. And uh, the final things that I would like to mention is lack of innovation. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Khalid. I think we would elaborate on those points when we become country specific also, but you've uh, given us a wider range of uh, uh, challenges that uh, your country, Afghanistan, is facing. Uh, in, uh, and uh, particularly, we'll be now concentrating more on the economic freedom uh, part also. Uh, I'd like to move on to Mr. Uh, Sarvagiraj Pandey. Uh, uh, Mr. Pandey, like, what are your take on the challenges that you see in advancing freedom, uh, economic freedom in your country, Nepal? Uh, thank you, Dr. Sandis and uh, Atlas Network team for providing me such an opportunity uh, to voice my uh, opinion on uh, economic uh, freedom, especially in, 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 in Nepal. So um, to start with, I think uh, recently I went through an article I, I just forgot the, uh, the name and the publication that it was in, but it described Nepal as a kleptocracy. So I'd like to begin with that. So um, Nepal recently, so to put things into con context, Nepal uh, recently became a federal democratic republic uh, and we pro promulgated our first constitu our constitution in 2015. And since then we uh, 
uh, we now have a robust set of subnational government that is a central government, uh, you know, federal government followed by uh, uh, provincial and local government. And with this, uh, we the main objective of this, you know, was to provide governance to the people. But what it has ended up so far, our three years uh, of experience is that there have been some positive uh, impacts, but like there have been a lot of misappropriations of budgets and uh, uh, most of the political parties on left, right and center have uh, taken this opportunity of, you know, of, uh, of making Nepal a federal republic with three uh, levels of government as an opportunity to misappropriate funds to their respective crony backers, you know, or, or like, so this has led to uh, Nepal losing out on freedom in uh, economic freedom index. So let's talk about the data as for now. So uh, just like uh, uh, Khalid mentioned, uh, Nepal too doesn't rank, uh, I think it's very close to Afghanistan. So we rank somewhere around in the 100, uh, in, in the 130s to 150s uh, range. Uh, when it when we when we when it comes to economic freedom and even doing business we have somewhat we have climbed uh, some ladders in doing business in nepal ease of doing business in nepal has somewhat increased but still starting a business i think that is very important to you know make uh, a country prosperous right so economic freedom can can be ensured if there are competing uh, in, you know enterprises but what, what if uh, the enterprises are not able to register on time or like you know on on, on a very uh, you know, first come first sub basis. So that is still Nepal, I think, still ranks poorly in that aspect. Yes, some of the aspects of doing business have increased, like uh, trade across borders, etc. have increased, but I think those are just margin, that those are not really, uh, they're just a very surfacial increase and we still have to see, uh, I, there are a lot of things that we need to do on that front as well. And uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, uh, other set just like in Afghanistan. So uh, I think uh, it's it's the same across so South Asia. So most of the uh, political, major political forces in our country uh, believe in collectivist ideology. So they are mostly, um, uh, you know, socialist party. None of the parties in Nepal uh, will, uh, can, you know, uh, challenge so socialism. And they have socialism as one of their uh, ideologies. And that has uh, also made them populist. And I think, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a major trend worldwide, right? So like populism uh, is, is, is the main uh, thing to go with. So whenever there's, uh, there is, uh, what do you call, uh, whenever there's any kind of uh, elections and we have a lot in our country because we recently had a two third majority government. It was a communist party government. Uh, who, despite having a two-third majority, have, are now into splits and now they have called for early elections. And what happens when we have elections? Uh, we mostly have populist schemes, you know, budgets are allocated to just appease people rather than actually work on ground realities uh, that is improving our uh, doing business indexes, right? So government, I think, has always been losing focus of it. And uh, that major, the major thing, I think, is also we are also to blame. We just can't blame the political leadership because they will always go down to things, you know, uh, they'll always try to see how they can captivate people's thought, you know, so that they can get them to vote for them. So uh, that has always been, Nepal always is very interested in political discourse and uh, we at Bikalpa have been trying to change that. We want to bring in political economic discourse, you know, we have to change that so that people will actually think that it's not just political freedom that's important, it's also economic freedom that's important. So that's what we have been working on. So for now, I'd like to put it to that yes, much. Okay. Uh, Thank you. We'd like, certainly uh, like to hear more from on that viewpoint of uh, your enterprises and your populism and um, mostly on relation to the doing business factor uh, where I'd be uh, giving you an opportunity more to specify on that. Now I'd like to move on to Mr. Min. Uh, He's from Vietnam. And uh, again, Mr. Min, like what are the challenges that you see in advancing economic freedom in Vietnam? And then we can move on to the other uh, specifics. Min, Mr. Min, over to you. Uh, you are unmuted, so could you just, uh, you are muted, so could you unmute? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hi, Sandesh. And uh, hi, Bill. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Um, so maybe um, um, you may know that, that uh, Vietnam has transit from a centrally planned economy to a market economy for about 30 years. And um, uh, compared to many countries, I think that the case of Vietnam is uh, somehow successful. We don't have sufferers and the um, big uh, disruption. 
And um, um, by now, um, uh, if we see on um, the components of uh, um, free market um, uh, economies, so uh, Vietnam's, I think that somehow uh, successful in uh, free trade, we now just uh, aside free trade with about the um, with about the 16 um, free, uh, free trade agreements. And the Vietnam's government also um, for some recent years um, uh, worked on um, macroeconomic stabilities with um, um, uh, monetary uh, policies and fiscal policies uh, um, uh, that the government uh, uh, and that was based more on rules than um, on, on uh, uh, obituary way. And um, um, also, I think that um, we also have some improvement on uh, regulation that attract uh, a lot of uh, foreign direct investment from, uh, for, from foreign countries into uh, Vietnam, uh, like the biggest uh, corporations uh, in the world now. Uh, uh, thus, in Vietnam, like Samsung, Apple, and um, so many others. Um, and um, for uh, all of these components, uh, we now that see is uh, one, um, yeah, for, for that from my point of view, is the most challenge for Vietnam um, to advance uh, uh, free market economies, I mean, to, to, to advance the market. Uh, uh, economies is uh, the legal systems and uh, and property right. Um, um, it is the we just face some uh, fundamental issues because you know that Vietnam is still a socialist uh, economies uh, uh, controlled and run by um, the, the communist parties, and so from its principles, so we have. Some, uh, one thing core is um, um, own people, ownership of land. And um, uh, because of that, uh, uh, enterprise and uh, people does uh, have uh, the use right on uh, land, this one example. And so the, 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 the government has a very strong um, um, uh, uh, position to um, to, to, to take back the, this right, whatever the government think that is important, like for the um, public purpose or uh, uh, economic purpose. And um, uh, also because of um, the um, some fundamental issues that, that everything's uh, uh, solved um, uh, based on uh, like uh, the, um, the, the, the uh, democratic uh, socialism of the communist parties, and so the legal system, like the independent um, court, uh, impartial court, uh, is uh, also not the very um, uh, is not uh, is not uh, quite good in Vietnam, and um, and, and and the government um, uh, also. Um, run um, their policies and many things intervenes into um, the business activities uh, very arbitrary ways. And um, so um, this big challenge for, 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 for us that we want to advocate uh, um, the uh, market the freedoms, uh, the, 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 the ex sure. ex yeah. uh, freedoms into Vietnam is uh, how yeah. we we'll get into that. We'll get into that point of how that advocacy part is going on. Uh, we should certainly like to hear more on that. And you've raised uh, your issues regarding the legal system and the proper rights that where you said that the ownership of land is still with the state, which does not give uh, the promulgating of uh, free enterprises that much of a boost. And you've also talked about where the independent courts are not as independent as it should be. And we'll be talking about on that. Uh, thank you all the three panelists for your insight about the challenges that you see and advancing the economic freedom in your country where uh, Rami, uh, where 
And Amizi talked about uh, so many factors like the changes uh, of uh, the belief systems. They do not want to do that. The rule of law is not as per the, this thing. There is war and insecurity and uh, about the negative mindset of society towards the level of freedom. Uh, the adapted laws that of a free society are still not within our grasp. The market manipulators, they don't want sustainable market growth to happen. So on and so forth. You talked about that, Ramizi. I'd like to just... Uh, Point out on a note on that, uh, Ramizi, how are you advancing economic freedom in your country? Like uh, what kind of measures are being practiced or what are the roles of the local think tanks in strengthening the market economy, uh, irrespective of so many challenges that have you've expressed, but what are the roles of the local think tanks in strengthening the market economy or how are you advancing the economic freedom in your country? Ramizi, it's over to you. Yeah, uh, th thank you so much, dear Dr. Sandish for the great questions. Uh, so we also, as a uh, unique think tank in Afghanistan, that you are working uh, for more than one decade in the country, we have a lot of uh, specific programs and projects in order to uh, advance or to prom promote economic freedom and other uh, issues which related to the ideas of a free society. Uh, for example, we created, we established a specific projects to, to, in different ways, we should educate, we should promote, and we should enhance the knowledge of the people about, about the ideas or about the issues uh, which we want to be promoted among the Afghan society. For example, one of the things, one of the projects that you are running since years is cell protest station. We are producing radio programs for promotion and for education of market economy uh, in the country, in two national languages of Afghanistan and also in uh, English language. Our programs not, are, are not only for Afghan nation, but even we are producing programs for other Persian and Pashto speaking countries. For example, Iran and Tajikistan and also some parts of Pakistan, which they are also speaking in Pashto language, which is one of the national language of Afghanistan. So this is one of our biggest projects. A lot of scholars, they are coming and they are sharing their insights and uh, wh wh what they want to share. And in this case, every year, at least we are, uh, our voice and our message are reaching to more than 600,000 people across the globe and inside the country. The other issue that we are, the other things that we are doing in advancing of economic freedom in Afghanistan is uh, another part of uh, the projects of, of, of the ELSO under the name of ELSO Academy. We are, uh, pro we are uh, creating new leaders in, in the liberty movements. Uh, we are uh, giving new ideas, concepts, uh, and, knowledge, uh, and knowledge to enhance their knowledge, their education, their level of education. To, they should come and to, they should take part uh, uh, and, and liberty movements and uh, work for promotion of these ideas. One of the things that I mentioned before, uh, that, that talking about freedom is, is very difficult in, in a country such yes. as Afghanistan. Yes, and, yes. Uh, and, we are and we are facing a lot of challenges, a lot of problems whenever we are talk, uh, uh, or, or, or whenever we put even a name of the uh, project or, or a program, uh, in the title of the projects, liberty or freedom, or something to which which related to the uh, to the freedom, to the ideas of of, of of a free society, but we have to work very tricky. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we are considering is that we are always uh, working uh, based uh, on the traditional and based on the religion of the people. So mostly mm -hmm. we are working. Uh, one of the exact projects that we have is Islam and liberty. So. Everything has uh, existed in Islam since years, since thousands of years, since the uh, establishment of is only Islam religion in, in the world. Uh, so, for example, when we are going to a, to a province and we, when we are organizing a conference or an event uh, under the name of human rights, so the concept of the, of the training or the conference is to, we should educate the young generation about the all uh, foundations of a free society, but but we can't put the name of the 
the name of the conference or the events, uh, for example, liberalism or freedom or something else. We are putting Islam and liberty. You are putting Islam and human rights. And on that way, we are uh, uh, accomplishing our projects. The other things that you are doing is, is uh, one of the other things that, that you are doing is one of the projects that under the name of equality for all Afghans. As I mentioned before, that the, the national laws of Afghanistan, which adopted during the communist regime and during the other regimes of Afghanistan, which they didn't uh, 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 believe on international documents on free society ideas. So we are giving advices, recommendations to, to legislation departments to they should bring changes in Afghanistan laws. The other mm -hmm. things that you are doing in advancing of economic freedom in the country is community engagement. So we are more engaged with the community to make them, to teach them, to educate them on a way to they should be the supporter of these ideas that we are promoting in the country. The other okay. things to I make to I should make it short is yes, providing yes. academic resources. For example, we are translating, we are publishing, we are researching in different issues of economic freedom and these things and we are providing academic resources for the new generation of, of, of the country. The last point that I would like to mention is uh, we are facilitating open dialogue in academic institutions uh, for, for promoting the ideas of liberty. And uh, so all these uh, issues that, that I raised, that I mentioned, uh, are, are, are some of our biggest uh, achievements, some of our biggest uh, programs uh, for uh, promotion of uh, economic freedom in a country such as Afghanistan. Very true, very true. And and we hats off to the efforts that all of the people, uh, especially people like you and your team are putting forward. Uh, yes, as you said, truly, like uh, even if there's a uh, liberty or freedom being used in a project, then the way that the uh, people in general perceive it or the government perceives it or the people not in the government perceives are, are difficult. We hear so much about it, but it's so nice that you have uh, devised ways to go around it and uh, at least uh, uh, engage the community or provide academic resources and promote ideas of liberty. That's a good thing that you're doing so that new leadership can be created or scholars can be in, involved. It's so nice to hear about such positive uh, impacts that you and your organizations are creating. It's so nice of it, Ramizi. Uh, we are right now at uh, the session Overcoming Challenges to Advance Economic Freedom at the uh, Atlas Networks 2021 Asia Liberty Forum, uh, which is co-hosted by Bikalp and Alternative. And uh, I'm the moderator, Sandes Das Resto. We have three panelists with us, uh, Mohamed Khalid Ramizi from Afghanistan, Sarva Garaj Pandey from Nepal, and Mr. Din Tuamin from Vietnam. We've been hearing about uh, the specific uh, country specific uh, how they have been uh, like advancing economic freedom, what are the challenges they have been facing, and also what practices are being done. I'd like to move on to uh, Mr. Sarvagya from Bikalpa and Alternative Nepal. Uh, Sarvagya and we are from the same hometown and we are from the same country. So we uh, have uh, uh, what Sarvagya is saying, I can really vouch for it because we are also, I'm also facing through the same phases. But uh, from a level that where you are more involved at the grassroots level of how policies in Nepal or the practices in Nepal are evolving and how they're being doing. Uh, I'd like to uh, make myself a little more clear also, and I hope this audience will get a clear insight about the way that um, are the measures and the practices that have been incorporated by people like you or the think tanks in Nepal. Uh, so how have they uh, got around in strengthening the market economy? Could you elaborate on that, Sarvag? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, basically, we, uh, as a think tank, we have been over the years, we have been involved in a lot of research projects and have been trying to bring in policy interventions. Uh, and th those have been far and few, but we are learning. And as we, as we keep growing and introducing new people into the team, you know, we'll, we are sure we'll be coming out with a lot more policy interventions in the future. But uh, somewhere around the line in 20, uh, 2018, 19, we decided that, you know, we need to take a different strategic approach, you know, because uh, it's going to be uh, some time before we actually start uh, bringing in meaningful uh, changes, you know, to policies, because that that is um, people who are in the public policy sector know that policy change is not a, uh, you know, it's not a kid's job and it's, it's just been five years uh, into it. So it's going to take a while. 
But uh, what could not wait was, you know, the wave of populism that we had seen and the two-third majority strong communist government. So there had to be another way, you know, because I, we, as we, as, as there's a saying, you know, iron cords iron. So or diamond cords diamond, right? So we, so we needed to uh, come up with some, some, some of something like that, you know. And uh, uh, recently, so what happened in 2019 was uh, the mighty two-third majority welding government, uh, communist government came up with a line, land management act, but they could not get it passed. You know, one of the main reason behind that was uh, it touched on the sentiments. It touched on one very sensitive issue of, uh, you know, trust, land trusts, you know, that was held uh, as a sacred place by various uh, indigenous communities in, 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 in Nepal, especially in Kathmandu, and they really came out, came out uh, onto the streets. So what was the reason? And, and because of that, government rolled back that decision. You know, it was called Guthi Bill, and it became a huge thing in Nepal. And that actually kind of inspired us because we went back to our drawing board and we thought, you know, so it can be countered, you know, sometimes it's not just policy, but also reaching out to the emotions of people that can really, uh, you know, uh, roll back a lot of policies. And that's, that's where we thought we need to work on. And uh, because I've been making a lot of videos, we, we have been working on research paper as well, but there have been a lot of videos and, and we know we, we, have, we have exceptional organizations like Samriddhi and Riddhi Foundation, uh, Pokhara Research Institute working in tandem day, day and night you know, on various policy issues. And they have a, a, a vast, uh, you know, uh, resources available, you know, on uh, various policy interventions, but it's going to take a time to get them all implemented. But what we could do is, you know, we could actually tie up, uh, we could reach out to people with sentimental videos, you know, sensitizing videos. That's something that we could do. And we could also engage people on various platforms, you know, go out, talk to them, reach out to them. So we came up with Liberty Camps at first, et cetera. And later on, we came, we thought, you know, we need really, we really need something, a, a resounding, uh, uh, a brand, you know, for economic freedom. So we need people to understand what economic freedom is and try to cap, uh, you know, take hold of the emotions, you know. And that's why we came up with something which you are seeing at the back. So it's a logo. Uh, it's called Arthik Swatantata in Nepali, which translates to economic freedom in English. And uh, this is a campaign that we have been doing, campaign, campaign for uh, economic freedom. You can uh, uh, hear, uh, learn more about this in our website. So it's an ongoing campaign. So we have been doing a lot of poster works. I'm sure uh, Dr. Sandesh has uh, seen, and I think it, it's sure. there in your, ubiquitous, at least in a uh, few major cities of uh, uh, province number one, and soon we we hope we'll be reaching out to various cities as well. So we want to connect with people emotionally, so that you know people will and and we also have a demography. We have thought of a demography whom, with whom we could work. That is 20 to 24 age group, which are like 40 percent of the entire population of Nepal. You know, and these people are going to be the major force, the biggest chunk of you know uh, uh, because we are a democracy. So uh, they are going to be the deciders, right? Of on who is going to be at the helm of Nepali politics. So if we can. Uh, 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 you know, connect a strike a chord with that generation. It's going to work a uh, wonders. You know, for uh, for 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 the liberty movement in Nepal, and that's why we have been doing a lot of uh, so economic freedom campaign is targeted at them, as well as we have been conduct conducting events like uh, liberty uh, discussions. We have, we do that every fifteen days, and a uh, lot of people they write back to uh, us. You know, people at Bikalpa. Mm -hmm. Uh, and saying that I, I I never thought we could think about development in such a different way. And that's how we are trying to get the message across. And another, re another way how we try to reach out to it is, you know, Nepal has a liberal mentality. I mean, like a lot of Nepali values do not uh, conform with uh, libertarian values. So how, how do we counter it? Like we don't really talk about those issues. So what we generally talk about is the two core issues that we work on is livelihood and entrepreneurship at the moment, especially to resonate with the 20 to 24 age group people, you know, because that is, those are two issues where nobody is going to, uh, you know, counter you. Nobody will have something to speak against, uh, you know, when we talk about, yes, look how small business owners, you know, who don't have much uh, capital, uh, you know, how economic freedom can help them uh, achieve prosperity, you know, so if you, if you, if you, uh, have those kind of argument, nobody is going to challenge that. And also on entrepreneurship. And we uh, we have been trying I'll, to- I'll, I'll, I'll uh, give you more of this thing, insights, uh, to, uh, more time to give you the insights on that because you talked about livelihood and entrepreneurship, Sarvagya, because earlier you said that doing businesses in Nepal or starting a business enterprise and the way to register is a difficulty. I think you would want to elaborate more on that. So I'll give you time on that, but I'd like to move on to Mr. Min uh, because you've talked about uh, earlier when you talked about the challenges in your country, Vietnam, you talked about the ownership of land, the legal system and the property 
right? So uh, could you briefly just tell us like uh, how uh, the local think tanks or uh, uh, the measures or practices that they have been doing and to uh, 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 strengthen this market economy, uh, Mr. Min? Well, uh, the most challenging for us um, to advocate the in, in, uh, free market uh, or the economic freedom say, is to how to operate uh, legally is the most difficult thing in Vietnam. Uh, you know that uh, by now so we still don't have uh, the laws uh, on uh, non-government organization. So um, like the people say, if we want to operate, we need to join um, like a state non-government organization. So uh, we have to join uh, the state uh, think tank universities um, to yeah. work uh, in just like uh, um, state officers. Um, so that's for um, uh, three recently, yes, so we have uh, um, um, uh, yeah, that's opened for what call is the social enterprise. So um, uh, like our think tank, um, uh, our organization is registered as a social enterprise, uh, mm -hmm. but um, uh, still some many, many things uh, restrict us on operation. So like um, it's quite difficult for us to raise fund. Uh, we need to approve, um, yeah, to, from uh, many many level of the government to um, get maybe just a, a tiny uh, amount of uh, funding from outside. And um, uh, also, um, uh, is this um, very difficult for us, uh, like to um, publish some things? Because all the um, media is uh, state um, controlled. Uh, yes, yes. And so if we do some things, um, it is very easy. It, it may be that the, 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 uh, the lies between uh, something legal and illegal is uh, um, quite um, blurred. And so we must be very careful when we do some things. So that is, the, we just tried our best last year to um, like translate books, but um, yes, some book after translation, we uh, uh, cannot publish because the government not allow it. And uh, when like we have a website, we we'll get um, 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 free markets, but uh, okay. when we publish some things, maybe some people from government will remind us that this, uh, you should not publish this, not publish mm -hmm. that. And um, yeah, it's a, makes us somehow very stressed. But, um, I, but I think that um, the most important to advance the economic freedoms is we need to prove the, um, uh, within the, uh, the, yeah, the legal framework of the country that we have the right to do this, we have the right to do that. And if so, we have to challenge with the government and and, 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 and we um, then uh, uh, think about uh, what we should, uh, uh, yeah, you know, what is legally we should do. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Advocate to the, yeah, what we believe is the right for the countries. Mm -hmm. so, so good to hear about so many things that uh, you all uh, at uh, uh, general level have been doing uh, to enhance social enterprises uh, in the times of the difficulty of publishing. The, there are so many translations that have been done to create that awareness and advocacy. It's so nice to hear about the uh, framework of labor laws or uh, enterprise laws are being framed and with the help of NGOs and universities. And I think this is not a small thing. It's a big achievement uh, because uh, hearing from the diverse panelists, uh, we are hearing about the difficulties, but more than the difficulties, it's so nice to hear about the guts that everyone is taking up from the grassroots level, that change is possible and freedom and economic liberty is the norms of how uh, uh, development can happen. So on that note, uh, as we have just around 14 minutes left to uh, conclude our session, I'd like to go on to Ramizi. We are on uh, overcoming challenges to advance economic freedom. We heard about the challenges. We heard about what the local uh, think tanks have been doing. And we're so proud that irrespective of the challenges, there are so many good things that all the think tanks are doing at their respective countries. But in Afghanistan, Ramizi, I know the environment is so difficult. You've talked about the challenges. In the challenges I heard, and just listening to it, 
it it made me like uh, vulnerable it made me so vulnerable but uh, you all are doing so great works how can you keep how do you keep your uh, team members uh, intact how do you pr promote volunteerism and how do you see the free, uh, future of economic freedom in afghanistan could you have your insights in around 2 to 3 minutes please ramizi yeah uh, thank you dr sandish uh, this is really an important question about about uh, Afghanistan to should be asked about the economic freedom of, uh, in here in, in Afghanistan. Uh, based on our uh, perspectives, uh, there are two perspectives about these issues about the future of economic freedom in Afghanistan. Uh, as you know, at the moment, the peace process of Afghanistan is going on. And uh, based on the peace process of Afghanistan, there is two perspectives. Number one, if the peace process uh, of, of, of Afghanistan succeeds, uh, obviously uh, we are sure that the achievements that we uh, gained, that we received, that we got since uh, uh, 20 years uh, in the country, so it will remain. Uh, so it will be a, a, in a way to we should be uh, uh, fine and, and it will be fine. But the second scenario or the second perspective is that that we are wondering a lot about that as to if the peace process of Afghanistan fails or if the peace process of Afghanistan failed uh, and again the war started or began, then the country will be will be in a very bad condition and all the achievements and, and everything that we gained since years in the country uh, about uh, democracy, about uh, 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 human rights, individual freedom, economic freedom, market economy, and, and all other issues, especially about women rights, women participation in political and, 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 and social environment of the country. So we will lose all these issues. So we are wondering about the future, but in the meantime, we are optimistic about the, about the future because we also as a think tank, we are sharing always our concerns, our concepts, our ideas in order to how uh, we can uh, move the peace process uh, forward in order to if we succeed in the peace process, how we can keep uh, the achievements uh, and, 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 and see the new face of Afghanistan in peace and prosperity and in love and in a harmony. So uh, uh, the two prospects that you just uh, uh, expressed, uh, like if the, the, because the peace process is going on and we do not want to, uh, uh, we never hope that you'll go back to where the peace process uh, will fail and the, the, the war will start and whatever we all have done will be undone. We just pray that it will succeed and the achievements that you all have built upon uh, will be more sustained in the long run. Uh, Ramisi, we'll get back to you. Uh, I, I want to go back to uh, Sarvagya from Nepal, Bikalpa and uh, Alternative. He represents Bikalpa and Alternative. Uh, Sarvagya, you talked about when we uh, said that, what were the think tanks doing? Uh, you said that uh, you're reaching out to, to the emotions of people because of an example that you gave about the land uh, act that had to be drawn because of the people's sentiment sentiments attached to it. And you've been uh, promoting through synthesizing, uh, synthesizing with uh, videos uh, and liberty camps. But then at the last, you talked about livelihood and entrepreneurship. Uh, being a Nepali myself and knowing the ground realities, uh, even when I wanted to start up a business, like you are not encouraged, but more discouraged to establish because of the so many factors. So on that note, like uh, what are the doing business challenges in Nepal, uh, especially due to this political instability or the frequent policy changes? What do you, what is your take on that? I just give you three minutes, Sarvagya. Sure, uh, so yeah, I think uh, just like as we speak, uh, we have not had uh, electricity since the morning, you know, so that's how, it, that, that, that's, that's, that's how it is, you know, and, and it happens every year in June, July, August, you know, so, uh, so there's that. So why do we come to this, you know, so that is something that we have been researching. And I think it's an open secret why this happens. One of the main reasons, so let's at first come to our very first when we started with, you know, economic index. Uh, so when you talk about uh, economic freedom index and doing business, we scored really bad. And uh, what did the government do? 
uh, our uh, long time uh, finance minister so uh, before the pandemic uh, even uh, he said that we, we are going on the right track and he disregarded those reports you know so that is how myopic our uh, leadership can go up to be. So how I would say, how can we solve this problem? And, and why would I be optimistic about, uh, you know, the state of economic freedom improving in our country? Because I do believe in the system. And uh, I think uh, if we get the right people for, uh, uh, in, in the in the business, you know, if we can get right people in the business of running the country, it can get right. So how can we do that? I think first thing would be uh, by public service delivery, you know, so uh, we need to, our government doesn't really care about uh, delivering the service to the public, you know, efficiently. So, uh, for example, at the moment, we are working on uh, motorcycle, uh, you know, driving license, you know, driving license is a very simple task, right? How much would you uh, imagine a person, how many days should a per person invest? In Nepal, it can take up to one or two years for you to get a driving license. It's as bad as that. And even taxation on vehicles, you know, so it's exorbitant. And uh, also another thing is, you know, one of the worry, worrisome tr uh, trend at the moment is, you know, the national imagination uh, has somewhat like uh, sifted towards, uh, you know, people asking government to give in more freebies and so much so that, you know, uh, long term, you know, 80s, 80s eras institute when we had state government managing most of the affairs, you know, doing most of the business. There are people uh, and even uh, policymakers who are calling for, uh, you know, opening up uh, national nationally owned enterprises, which I think we should go away from. So that is also one area uh, where I think we uh, as a think tank can sensitize uh, people, you know, and change the national imagination as such. So I think pandemic has to an extent made a lot of people uh, be very, uh, you know, uh, look more towards the government, but we, but there needs to be a narrative, you know, in which we need to uh, try to come up with, uh, we need to try and promote this narrative of how, you know, is the free will, is the free in enterprising will of people that triumphs over, you know, government mandated um, uh, paychecks. So that's what we want people to understand, you know, and uh, and that's where we'll be walking towards. And uh, obviously, so like I said in the beginning, public service delivery is some is is, a, is an area we'd want to uh, uh, focus on. And I think at the end, I also want to say uh, we had talked about entrepreneurship and all. So uh, we have been focusing at the moment. So all these things we have been pro providing to students, you know, especially the age of twenty to twenty four through entrepreneurship training where we teach people values of entrepreneurship and that in that way we promote the values of freedom so uh, that is how we have been working at the moment and that is how the uh, situation is in nepal okay thank you thank you sarvega for highlighting on uh, the thought that from uh, people being uh, provided with freebies rather than that uh, or the government mandated paychecks it should be where they should be promoted to work so that they could be entrepreneurs on their own rights and uh, and uh, their prosperity is in their own hands um mr min uh, you talked about uh, vietnam's uh, transition from a central planned economy to market based economy where the macroeconomic perspectives are being uh, looked into and uh, then uh, the monetary policies are on uh, briefly could you just elaborate on how these uh, points have been uh, uh, taken up, the legal system and property rights. Just very briefly, we are running out of time. So could you just give a brief on that, uh, Mr. Min? You are muted, so could you, uh, yes, please. Okay. Um, now, the, uh, that's for us, we try to advocate that, that um, um, market um, mechanisms uh, that proofs in Vietnam is um, uh, good uh, in um, many areas. Uh, and so um, uh, it should also be good in um, uh, some areas that the government still uh, very strictly controls, like, uh, uh, yeah, what we are doing now is the think tanks, uh, the news media, the public service, and something like this. And we need a uh, a legal framework to operate, and uh, we 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 just try to advocate that what like in in papers the government of it, uh, private uh, enterprise um, is not good, so now it's just um, privatization. So why the government uh, yeah don't um, allow us so like uh, I was just the, the private think tank. Uh, uh, private publishers or private new media operate um, uh, legally, and we 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 we, we compete uh, uh, to provide ideas and provide um, 
um, yeah, the leverage uh, different leverage from different angles to the public and to the people. So that is why we try to op um, uh, advocate, and that's uh, by the, our our operation. Even it's uh, somehow difficult, but we but that's the we we think is the right way to do in Vietnam now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Min. It's so nice to get your insights that uh, on the basis of the legal systems and the property rights that where the ownership of land is still not guaranteed to the individuals, but you all are still working on it so that it can be on a different platform. Okay, we come to the end of this session uh, on advancing of uh, overcoming challenges of uh, to advance economic freedom. Uh, the next session is big ideas, improving governance for more freedom and prosperity, which will start soon. Uh, thank you to to our three panelists, uh, uh, Mr. Mohamed Khalid Ramizi from the Afghanistan Economic and Legal Studies Organization, uh, Mr. Sarvagi Rajpande from the Kalpana Alternative Biratnagar, Nepal, and Mr. Nintua Min from the Market Solutions Research Center for Social and Economic Issues, Masai, Vietnam. I know when issues like this come up, the whole day is not enough. So when we wrap it up in one hour, maybe there are so many things that would not, like you'd want to express more, but we know uh, everything that comes in a small package can create a dynamite when we put it into perspective in our real world. So thank you very much for this opportunity to uh, James uh, at the Atlas Network, uh, Chelsea, and also Cam for the wonderful uh, coordination that you did with us, Cam Griffin. Thank you very much. And to uh, Basanta Adhikari from Bikalpa, an alternative in Viratnar for this opportunity. I have been an associate professor of Provincial University for the past 20 years, uh, specializing in the human resources and the marketing field. But like, see, this one hour of uh, interaction that I could do with uh, friends like Sarvagi, who is known to me, but like Mr. Min from Vietnam and uh, Ramizi from Afghanistan. I got so much good insights that I can translate even in my classrooms. And this is also a learning that happened for me. So thank you for this opportunity, Bikalpa. And thank you, everyone. Uh, catch you up again in the next uh, series uh, of the session that is going on uh, in the next few minutes. Big ideas, improving governance for more freedom and prosperity. Dhanyawad, this is what we tell. Thank you in Nepali. Thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ramizi. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Th